YouTubers. My wife said when I say hi YouTubers, it sounds like I was saying YouTubers. Well, I know half of you are tubers. The other half, you're all right. Well, you know who you are. Hey, I'm a fucking tuber, uh, you know. Anyway, tonight's project brought to you by the fine people at Bacardi Gold. And the 7-Up people play a small part. So what tonight's project is, I'm going to take this shitty old file right here, I'm going to make a little knife out of it. Uh, be like a little, uh, I don't know, I was thinking Bowie knife, but it might not be enough metal in this file, but it's close, it's close, but I have to move some up. Uh, this will be a... Um, just a uh, burned in tang style, nothing fancy, kind of like an old timey knife, you know. Uh, I can craft finer knives when I want to, I just don't because, in my opinion, they're uh, a bit of a, you know, well, they take a lot of time. And my time is money. I don't have all day to make videos. Uh, well, maybe I do, but I don't. So, what you got to do with one of these fucking things oh. Okay, so what you got to do with one of these things Take yourself an old file, this one here, the tangs broke off, so that's why I figured it would be a good candidate for it I got other rotten files, I got piles of files, you can get them from any yard sale buy them by the boxes, you know, files, files are pretty easy to come by and they make really good knives. Um, what you got to remember to do is to grind all this, the file part of it off and leave yourself a flat bar. Uh, if you leave the file on there, some people think it's kind of cool to leave it on there for the look, but uh, uh, from what I understand, uh, not from experience, but from what I understand, if you leave it on there, uh, it makes it easier to break and these are going to be relatively brittle knives um, It's pretty hard not to make them uh, very hard. Uh, it's a high carbon steel uh, About the highest carbon you can get in a steel is in a file um, Because uh, you know, It needs to be as hard as it can get and still be cheap to make so basically this is the highest of carbon steel um, so, uh, we're going to clean this all off and get rolling. So, here we go. Have a drink first. It is Friday night. So, you know, what else are we going to do on Friday night? Okay, that's one side cleaned off. It might be a little easier if you anneal it. Um, you know, it wouldn't save you a ton of time to anneal it, but depends on how big the file is, I guess. Probably be a good idea if you had a coarse file, but this fine file, the teeth are not very tall, so it's coming off pretty easy. I'm using a blender, like a, a 60 grit blender. Yeah, it's a 60 grit zirconium blender. Works pretty good. I could probably hit it with a grinder first. Try that first, I guess. See what it does. Okay, so we just turned an old shitty file into a piece of bar stock. So we got a piece of high carbon steel bar stock now. Still a few little bitty lines in there. 
I'm not going to worry about it. The foraging process will pretty well take take the rest. It's just a couple little spots I see that I missed. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I ain't going to worry too much about it. But if you were really, you know, making a serious knife, you'd want to clean off every single one of these little little marks. I'm not going to worry about it for this. This is just a demo. Um, what I plan on doing is. Um, there's more meat at this end, so this is going to become my knife end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, just chop that off with a chop saw, bring it to a point, and then that's going to become my knife point. Then I'm going to forge the shape. Then I'm going to forge the back end into a tang. Almost looks like a little mini Tanto. I said it wrong. Not a Tanto. Tanto. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm not fucking Japanese. Uh, when it comes to tool steels or medium steel, high carbon steels, um, just don't work it as hot as you would normally work it. Um, you know, you don't want it that bright yellow heat. It's, uh, it's not good for any tool steels at all, any kind of high carbon steels. So just trust me on that. Unless you're trying to make them soft, which like on the tang, I could do that because the tang's going to be soft anyway. So here we go. Yeah, I'm wearing my gloves. I'm wearing my glasses. Stop giving me a hard time. Okay, we've got about uh, three and a half inches of tang there, which is probably enough for a five inch handle. And uh, up in here, this will all be file work. Okay, we've got a bright orange color here, probably not more than 2,000 degrees, maybe 2,100 at the most. That's all you can get out of that heat.
Okay, that's essentially my final shape. Um, this will all be ground out up to here. And the, even though it's sort of a banana shape, this will be, this will be honed down. It's just been thinned out. And uh, right now, while it's still warm and unquenched, you never should have quenched this ever while you were doing it. Um, it's more or less soft. And what I'm going to do now is a bit of straightening and like, well, we call it plan planishing work. Basically, it's like cold working. So that's pretty straight. We're going to leave this uh, fairly crude just because personally that's the way I like them. It, uh, once you finish a knife like this, you just know it's been handmade. So, what else do I got to do? Um, I got to put my mark on it, so that'll be next. Okay, here's the crude shape of our tang. Now it'll be a little bit of file work. Okay, so that's all I plan on doing. Um, it's the crude shape. It's really just belt work now. And uh, basically that's it. I mean, that's how you do it. It's, uh, that's how you do the blacksmithing part. The rest is clean up and grinding and polishing, etc., etc., etc. I don't know if there's anybody out there who might be interested in this knife. Uh, to finish it up for me. I think it'd be kind of neat if somebody did. Um, if you think you would like to have this knife and uh, do the finish work on it and maybe post a video showing the completed knife and um, uh, I mean it's kind of tricky because it really needs to be uh, heat treated and you'd still have to do a little file work depends on what kind of handle you're going to put on it so um, it's pretty easy to talk you through that part of it as long as you have a forge but uh, I'm guessing quite a few of my uh, subscribers are blacksmiths or amateur blacksmiths so why don't you leave a note saying why you would like to have this knife what you plan on doing with it and uh, whoever gets the most thumbs up on their comment, I'll send you the knife. What the hell? So anyway, remember, life's tough. It's tougher when you're stupid. And uh, make sure you own a bow 
for the coming zombie apocalypse. Because after August 2nd, there's going to be flesh-eating zombies running around the United States and probably Midwestern Canada, you know, Ontario. You know, it's quite a few zombies there. Probably a few in Vancouver, too. So, get yourself a bow. It's the best thing, because you can make your arrows, right? You know, a gun, it's good for a while, but what do you... What are you going to do, like, when all the bullets are gone, you know? So, get a bow. Yeah, bow's good. Or a knife. Throwing stars.